Hi everybody, this is John McGowan here. Uh, I am a uh, secondary math teacher and I love using technology, especially Google. Google's the backbone of my classes and I'd love to integrate it. Uh, here I show my uh, workflow that I use to create my problems for my students and uh, how I use the Google scripts to do that and use the, insert them into Google Forms, which is difficult using math. Uh, you can go to my blog, mathtechtips.blogspot.com, and I put up most of my thought process and a lot of the scripts and uh, soon the repository of information for problem sets. Uh, so here I'm going to give a quick tutorial of how, to, how I do my workflow. So I'll start off with a uh, screen share. And I love all of Andrew Stillman's work. I do think that he is amazing and uh, started off with uh, a lot of his scripting last year looking at uh, Doctopus especially. And so the basis, my template here is the same format as the, the from the G class folders, the template that I get from the G class hub URL. So I launched Doctopus a lot. And so I have the student first name, student last name, email address. And so here is just a template of how I do it. So it has the same format, so it seems quite similar. Um, I have three templates up here. One of them is a step-by-step -step solution menu. I run that first to populate the step-by-step -step solution cells. Um, I have two tabs, student data and questions. The questions uh, is looks quite complicated due to the way that you need to insert math um, so it looks appropriate. Uh, I have detailed it on my blog. I'll do another post about how I do that. But essentially it's an image URL uh, that has the problem. This one is a set problem set from polynomial long division. There's the polynomial that I want to divide. And then um, my students, originally I was just doing it and uh, sending them, and then I send them the results, and they wanted to know what problems they were missing. Uh, so I use Wolfram's Mathematica to create my problem sets. And uh, Wolfram Alpha has a step-by-step -step solution thing that I can query using Wolfram Alpha. So I've started to uh, take the step-by-step -step solutions and then put them as a JPEG into my Google Drive. And, let, and then I will send this image to them if they miss that question. So I really like how um, that integrates well into what the students were asking for and how I can do that. So if you get a problem set from me, then you won't have to do this because I have to do this first to populate these step-by-step -step cells. Um, so that's my first step in my workflow. Well, it's really like step five. I use Mathematica to create this problem steps. But how do I push the forms out? So use the individual quiz creator menu. Click on create individual quizzes and then ask me how many problems I want. Um, this You can pick a random number of problems. I'm in the process of adapting this to do certain levels to help it be more differentiated. But each student will get a different quiz. Right now it just counts through the problems and gives them different ones. So let's say I wanted to do, we'll just make it three problems and I hit submit. Uh, this UI will stay up here as it's working. It does create two columns to help me in case it times out. I found if I have like 25 students and um, it's doing like 10 problems, the it'll exceed my maximum time limit that I'm allowed on scripts. So that's put in there. Once the form is created for that student, it'll start where it's empty. And I've also found students want to have more after they find out that they made a mistake. And so I also will um, just delete that form created and I can send them multiple versions uh, of their quizzes so I can give them more and more quizzes or problem sets so that they can practice, which I've part of the things that I've really found is pretty awesome that they are responding really well to being super excited, they say, I submitted, I submitted, how did I do, how did I do? And they like to see the results populated. And we'll see that here in a second. This UI, I'm still working on making it disappear. It stays when the blue is running around the box. It's because it's still running the script. Um, once it is finished running the script, then uh, the box is no longer there, and I can delete it. Uh, so I can exit out here, because uh, I can see all the forms have been uh, created and it stops being blue. So that's good, and I hit X out. I've been working on doing that, but I figured I needed to put it out there. So now this has made the URL the published form, and here's where I can edit it if I want. And it puts the problems, and then the answers, and then the step-by-step -step solutions to each problem. So it populates all of that. So just a quick look at this person's test student one. It even says new quiz for test student one, so they like seeing their name up there. And then it has the problem and where they need to write their answer, and then when they need to submit it. So that's what the workflow looks like. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do quick uh, submission so we can see how it grades it. Uh, so that's student one. Let me quickly do it for the other students as well. Unfortunately, they're all going to miss all the problems. That's another thing that I've been working on is the semantics of how to grade it when it's a higher order algebra problem. Uh, mainly 
I like it if it grades the ones that they get correct quickly. I always look at the ones that they missed anyway, so it doesn't matter to me if it doesn't grade it 100% accurately. For me, I use it more as formative information, just to quickly see how well students are doing and if they need to review more topics. Um, so here I've done an answer for all of them. So my students, now the one thing I want to do is, uh, once I've created them, I want to send it to them. So I just click this button, and it'll send them an email based on their email address with the URL contained. So I can see here, um, it'll send me, because I is my email address, so it sends me the link, they click on there, and that's how they get the forms. Uh, so that's pretty interesting, that I don't even have to worry about sending them. So now they've done all the questions. Uh, so I want to grade them. And so I do the pull most student read and response. So it will, they can do it multiple times, and you'll see it run through there if they do multiple times, but it only keeps the latest one out there. Uh, but it is nice to see sometimes when they have all reds and then they change to greens when they do it again and again. Um, so the, here, it will send an email if I want or not. So sometimes the first time through when I have some students who finish early, I don't send the email, and then I send it later on. But uh, So if I wanted to send an email, I say yes, and now it's going to go through and it will check their problem responses versus the answer, and it will say correct or incorrect and sum up the number they got correct. Obviously, all these are wrong because I just put answers in there. And so I like the quick red-green check to see whether it's wrong or not. Um, and so there also it checks over here if they send the email. Uh, so I can also, if I only want to send the email to certain people, I can use that if I delete it and run that again. It will only send the email to student number two. Um, so let's go ahead and look at what that email looks like. Uh, so I like that aspect as well. So what the email looks like is it gives me the step-by-step -step solutions for the problems that they missed. So this one, um, it looks like, I don't know which student it was. But uh, so problem number one, they missed it, so it comes up and shows the step-by-step -step solutions there. It's also in the attachments down here that they could see. Um, they're just viewing a Google Drive uh, image that I have here that I've uh, pulled off of Wolfram Alpha using their step-by-step, -step, which is pretty cool because then they can see what they've missed, and then I can actually just delete the form created, and if I run that again, it will just create for, uh, if I say I want you to practice that again um, and hit three questions, it will now only do uh, this student here, test student number two, and uh, give them a new problem. And it won't make any new ones for the other students. And then when I see that that form gets created there, it's uh, finished. Um, so that's one thing away, so I can see that it made a new form. And those ones will actually be the same problems because I haven't randomized that part yet. But I like the fact that they can keep practicing again. And so I have, they have a new form. And so I can I actually just keep submitting and publishing them new forms um, so then the best part after that is I have one, I have a spreadsheet with all the students for different lessons. So like test student one, they have an empty grade sheet because uh, this is the first assignment. But I have a, every assignment they have after that, after it's graded, I click this send graded result to student grade sheet. And what it'll do is it'll take the graded response. If, it, if the student has submitted a response, so if, if it's graded it or not, it'll go and take that and copy all that information to that specific student website. So that way each student in my classes has their own grade sheet and I can see kind of a running progression of their assignments. And it's nice to see the progress from if they miss a lot to miss not too many. And I can quickly see who's struggling and who's not and work with them individually. So I use this mainly to work on skills and also to give me a quick viewpoint of what students are struggling with and not. So this runs through and it goes through for each of the four students. It does take a good chunk of time to run, but like test student one, I can see that it put the assignment name, the form created there, um, and it puts all those that information in there. So it just copies that over, uh, and they got none right. If I catch up to student three, I think it hasn't been written yet. Um, oh, it is. I'm too late. You can actually see them progress through, and it'll add them all on there. But it takes and disaggregates that data, puts them all in their own individual spreadsheets. Um, if I would do it again, let's say student number two, uh, redid it, uh, I can uh, go through there, put their information, and let's say they, this because we sent, we created another quiz for them, let's say they got the answers in there and put fives. Now if I go back and pull this, it'll pull the only ones it'll look for, the ones that haven't had the email sent again. I can also type in no and it won't send an email, uh, but it's going to go through and it'll grade uh, student, it runs through student number one, but you can see as it replaces over that student number five. And so now I can actually, if I, um, 
uh, add this, if I do the student, send the graded results again, if I look at student number two, I had their first assignment was in there, and then it'll add the next one underneath of there. Um, as we can see, it adds them in one at a time. And so I can see that running progression. I'm working on putting a timestamp on there, but it has the assignment, and I'm also going to have the click link there. But I can even see what their form was and all the information from their problems uh, and how, they, how many they got correct. So I use that kind of uh, as a formative way to see how they're doing on each different topics. Um, so that's kind of my workflow, and uh, hopefully you find it useful. Um, I, I really love it. It saves me a lot of time. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, hit me up on Google+, Plus, um, uh, google.com slash plus John McGowan, or at, um, you can also find me at mathtechtips.blogspot.com. Uh, so hopefully that was helpful, and uh, I'll be posting some of my problem sets for you to use. And if you have some questions or if you have some requests, let me know. You can also find me uh, on Twitter with at uh, jmacattack. So that's my uh, Twitter handle as well. So um, you can see me there. I guess you can't really see, see it on my thing. Uh, so thanks.